Hello everybody and welcome to episode 89 of the Pentagon Challenge. The beginning of the end of my time in charge of Vasco da Gama is approaching and uh, this is the uh, final game of the Brasileiro season. Uh, unfortunately I have bad news to break. We will not be the champions of Brazil this season. We have significantly uh, bottled our opportunity ever since losing to Palmeiras and indeed the boys in green are now uh, reigning supreme for the first time in nearly 30 years so I have to say congratulations to them but uh, we'll be showing you highlights of Santos versus Vasco da Gama uh, later on in this episode I just want to uh, show you the lineups uh, of our final league game of the season we will be playing Bernal, Guedes, Nen, Sosa, Para, Centurion, Leandro, Fonseca, Carreca, Carlos and Leonardo in our final game they'll be doing a similar uh, a tactical approach with the 4-2-3-1 but they have their two midfielders as defensive mids uh, so we we trying to break that down as quickly as possible uh, just to show you exactly what went wrong after such a promising uh, second or third quarter of the season after playing Palmeiras everything fell apart especially here the game I said was an almost certain victory uh, we completely lost the run of it and Fluminense scored three goals to end our reign as the Copa do Brasil holders and it was a genuine, genuine humiliation having conceded one goal in the 15 minute it felt like we're okay we had a very good chance of scoring the away goal we needed however uh, we failed to break the, their team down and the pressure suddenly ramped up when Urban Gonzalez scored in the 68th minute that meant the next goal would all but win the tie and it fell to Carlos Prediger a very very bad giveaway of a goal this one and that meant our reign as Brazilian Cup winners was indeed curtailed and Flamengo ended up uh, winning it uh, back after a few years in the wilderness they hadn't played in a final since 2020 against Corinthians who they've obviously gotten the payback on so I have to say fair play but Flamengo will be back in the Copa Libertadores next season hoping to avenge their defeat but uh, of all my um, disappointing uh, losses in charge of Vasco de Gama that has to be the worst one uh, having destroyed the same opposition by four goals to one just a few weeks earlier actually just a like how was it just a week earlier then to go to the Maracanã and get thrashed is a disgrace really and our fortunes continued to tumble as we were held to goalless draws against Botafogo and Sao Paulo who if I show you the league table are one game away from relegation from the top tier of Brazilian football that will be a major shock if they go down but they have one last chance to uh, ensure their survival uh, we had the red card in this game as well which really didn't help our cause Mineiro undeservedly beat us 1-0 here um, it was a close enough game but we gave away a cheap goal allowing Osvaldo to go one on one with our goalkeeper and he was never going to miss Fluminense wrecked our season for the second time running we couldn't break them down uh, we tried and tried and tried um, we got the fluke equaliser which ended our time away uh, from the goal celebrations but then they went up their end and scored so that ensured our defeat against them again however we did uh, stabilize our season eventually as we were throwing away our Copa Libertadores position uh, you know game after game and thankfully against Gremio we outsmarted them with a new 4-4-2 formation and one goal in each half was enough but then the second worst defeat of my time in charge of Vasco was here against Paranense, a team I don't really like playing against. But they completely destroyed the 4-4-2 I had thought was going to be our uh, saving grace. However, it was not to be as Ragelli scored a hat-trick. Clayton and Joe Anderson also helped themselves to a goal. So this was terrible, terrible, terrible stuff we were trying our best to rescue the situation but it ended up uh, costing us more than uh, I bargained for and that can only go down um, as a real shaking of the head moment we were so so terrible and uh, that pretty much guaranteed we would never uh, be contender for the league uh, again 
Um, so, but then, uh, yeah, but then we got the uh, three victories in a row, starting with Fortaleza, which almost ended up being a terrible, terrible draw. Magales put us ahead. Pereira scored an equaliser with six minutes to go. And then, thank the Lord, from a throw-in in the very last second of the match, Emerson Fonseca, thanks to a cross from Carlos, who received the throw-in at his feet, he found Fonseca and he jumped highest to bolt in a header and that turned the season around once and for all. We got the 2-0 win against Bahia and then 3-0 against Chape Cuense. Uh, absolutely fabulous performance. It nearly made it uh, uh, up for the three uh, for the 5-0 defeat but we couldn't get the fourth goal as uh, Vinicius was ruled out for offside. Um, we did play a terrible game against Goish. Um, a goalless draw again but if we just kept our nerve, we would have been the first division champions. But we have the chance to at least come second here against Santos at the Villa Belmiro. And that is of pivotal importance. But then we have the Club World Championship to look forward to. I will be most likely resigning from my role uh, 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 with Vasco. I don't have to unless you guys... <coughs> you guys believe I should move on and try a new job. But of course, you can always say... Uh, stick with the club one more year my uh, reluctance would be the season is so long that it, it would be very very difficult to uh, start the season and then quit early on into it when there are so many games to play week after week I've got a few unhappy players as well so perhaps that could be another reason why I should let someone else take over but the teams in charge uh, or the teams taking part in this year's club world championship will be Manchester City Vasco da Gama, FC Seoul, who keep winning their Champions League. So I really want that job, if at all possible. We've also got Tigres and Etoli du Sahel. I don't believe they've ever won the African Champions League before. No, they've won it twice. So that makes a bit of sense. So Tunisia is the place to be uh, if you can't manage to get Egypt or South Africa. But we've also got Shangdong, our former rivals in China. And then Team Wellington, who I presume won the... Uh, the Oceania uh, Champions League, yes, they did. So they will also be taking part. But Changdong, for whatever reason, are in this tournament as well. So we'll be uh, live coming this final of that if we make it. But we'll see highlights of the semi final if we uh, win that. So let's just see how we fare against Santos. Welcome back to the episode. As things transpired, we have beaten Santos on the last day of the season to confirm our position as uh, runners-up for the Brasilia Rao, only beaten by Palmeiras, of course. Uh, this was 100% fluky. I don't think we deserved all three points. Santos had uh, phases of play where they were completely on our... Uh, be putting pressure on us and they're on our cases however Francisco Carlos and Leandro on the 6th and 66th minutes make of that what you will they were good enough to get us the victory but Hugo Guevara tried his very best to get uh, the legendary Santos club back into the game with a brilliant goal so we'll just take a look at those now and uh, I hope you enjoy them so we'll let uh, turn on the sounds and uh, take a look So the opening goal came as a result of a goal kick from Santos's end. We've got Carlos on the ball, over to Leandro. Centurion will now swap the play. Goes out wide to Fonseca. He's beaten the left back, all ends up. And then it's a very simple finish from one of the best players, not just of youth, but of all the club, Francisco Carlos, making it 1-0. However, just two minutes in the second half, we found ourselves back level as an interception in the midfield allowed Santos to open up some space. They spread it out to the left. Then here's Guevara. He just needs one touch, and he hammers it into the top corner. Uh, Bernal had absolutely no chance. However, we were able to win from this free kick in our own half. Leandro and Fonseca working together brilliantly. Pedro gets taken down, but Leandro, with his right boot, he managed to find the corner uh, against all logic, really. And that was just a fantastic goal from a very underrated player. He didn't get the season uh, he really deserved. Um, he's been such a good player over the years, and uh, he scored the most important goal uh, for quite some time 
for Vasco de Gama. And the league table looks like this after all 38 games are now complete. Palmeiras did not win on the final day. I believe they drew, yeah, 1-0 with Paranense. Uh, Santos, of course, we defeated them. So uh, only Palmeiras were able to lose seven games. Everyone else lost eight or more. But it's down in the bottom uh, four I'd like to talk about because Fluminense and Sao Paulo, multi-time champions of the uh, country have been relegated that is unthinkable in any day or age even in the virtual world but their uh, reckless um, conduct with their managers has paid uh, the ultimate price particularly for Sao Paulo I've mentioned this before but if you want to see it again this is what they were doing with their managers um, when it loads there we go so let's see the list is so long I have to scroll down so they sacked the manager after one year here. They sacked this manager after 161 days. This is just after I opened up the league. So I knew something was wrong at this point. Then they sacked this manager after 123 days. Uh, this manager up here lasted 350 days. Um, and then up here nearly only survived 211 days. Aruka... 258 days, Kyle Jr. 108, and now Paolo Vitor has been dismissed after failing to keep the club in the uh, Brasil Arau. And I cannot say anything else apart from how dumb are the, the board of Sao Paulo. You've cost your club very, very dearly, and I cannot see how that behavior can uh, reward you with uh, an automatic promotion back to the uh, Premier Division so I just cannot believe how quickly they sack the managers and um, that's just the way it goes so I don't know how many of them are back in work like they're just so terrible most of these guys should never be near a job uh, of the quality of Sao Paulo but that's the way it's gone Fluminense are already looking for their new manager um, but you can see they're probably a little bit more patient yes they were so they got rid of Baptiste after five years but he couldn't uh, but he won the league twice, which is fair enough. Um, let me see. Uh, this guy they got rid of, he won nothing. And this guy, uh, Wagner Mancini, we probably should know him. He didn't win anything. Uh, Sousa didn't win anything. And then the guy that had the uh, responsibility of keeping the club in the league has been sacked, but not before the final day, where uh, you know he got, you know, the club is already doomed. So quite incredible that they are not a particularly successful team in the league in recent years but to get relegated is still disgraceful and uh, I say good riddance to bad teams they were not good enough uh, just before I comment on my squad there is one very interesting vacancy that has appeared it's none other than the Red Devils of Manchester United unfortunately I don't think you'll get much of an opinion um, on this on, uh, for quite some time as I'm so many episodes away uh, I don't want to spoil anything because I can't say, but um, Nicky Butt is in charge of Manchester United for the time being. But the game against Olympiacos is vital as it will determine whether or not they'll stay in the Champions League. If I, if I had confidence they would win the tournament, then I would apply because Wayne Rooney has a three-star reputation. Uh, as a manager and I do as well but if they lose then I don't want to go near it it's just not the right time to go back to the Premier League in the football manager universe for me but it definitely has grabbed my attention and I probably will regret it if they do go on to win the Champions League but as far as I'm aware they've been nowhere near winning the tournament so Wayne Rooney has worked his way up to being manager of Manchester United and uh, unfortunately his time uh, in the dugout is over he managed to win the Europa League and the European Super Cup for his uh, his long time club, but he was not going to be the champion of uh, the league again. Uh, if we look at their history uh, down up and down the years, so they've really declined since 2019-20. They've come second, 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 fifth, and fourth, and I don't see where the improvement is coming. And uh, they've got a very, very good squad, I'm uh, assured, but it's not the kind of one I want to work for just yet I'm pretty sure the club is in disarray and I don't want to go uh, there while I uh, don't need to but definitely I have to think of something to do while uh, I will be unemployed 
Um, I don't think any of these jobs, apart from the United one, will suit me at this moment in time. I want to get into North America or back into Asia or Africa to try and win those tournaments, but those jobs, I think, are locked up for the time being. Um, but anyway, let's just talk about the squad. I won't do the stats uh, for you immediately, but we have a few injury concerns just as the Club World Championship is coming. We've got Kareja injured in the last game. His thigh is bruised. Christian Barrios already injured with a torn groin muscle, so he's out for the remainder of the season. Carlos Matthews has blisters, so we won't be out for too long. Benavan uh, is returning to fitness very soon. And Marquinhos Cipriano has been missing for quite some time. So it's a bit typical that these things happen while uh, the, uh, the season is winding down. I could have been able to rotate my players a bit better during the year if um, you know these kind of things happened uh, in the middle of the season. But you can see a lot of players are unhappy with the amount of game time I was giving them. So... <clears throat> that's just uh, something to keep in mind but uh, anyway uh, that's pretty much everything that needs to be said we'll fast forward to the club world championship and we'll see what kind of team we'll have to play to uh, try and become the champions of the world uh, so I wish uh, we can do that and then we can leave the club in uh, good stead um, that's pretty much all that needs to be said let's head to Seoul and try and win this tournament Welcome back to the episode. You join me in a chilly South Korea where we will be playing Tigres in the Club World Championship semi-final. The first time Vasco have been here in over 25 years. So it's a moment to savour, but we cannot uh, gloat as Tigres are the North American champions and we cannot dismiss them for a moment. However, uh, the potential uh, to play either the host city or Manchester City is something that we should really be excited about and uh, to you know play Tigres in, a, in an advantageous situation should be savoured and uh, I really really hope we can beat another Mexican team on our way to further glory so uh, if we look at the past winners of this tournament Vasco were the runners up to Corinthians in the very first tournament uh, Manchester United nowhere to be found interestingly um, and then we look at the history again, Sao Paulo in 2005, and then most recently Chelsea in 2024. They beat Boca Juniors with Toronto FC coming in third. So we want to get either MLS, the Mexican Premier League, the, the K League, the South African Premier League, or something along those lines to win our second uh, continental tournament so anyway another piece of uh, fantastic news uh, belongs to me as I have won the Brasileirao manager of the year award the first I've won uh, in Brazil and the fourth overall I've been manager of the year in South Africa and in China and now in Brazil so it's a clean sweep uh, in terms of success there but I'm so so proud to be only the uh, third manager of the year since the award was unlocked in 2020 Dante uh, Jorginho and now yours truly it's brilliant I cannot wait to uh, try and bring success to another country but now let's see how we get on in the Club World Championship and off we go Tigres and Vasco da Gama have kicked off we'll keep an eye out on Seoul and Manchester City they play tomorrow I think these are the starting lineups for both teams as uh, Tigres get the opening corner of the match they uh, don't seem to be able to use it um, Esper quite uh, just uh, shy of the goal there so we've got Andriini, Guedes, Vinicius, Martinez, Para, Centurion, Leandro, Xavier, Evander, Carlos and Magales uh, Tigres have Carlos Vieira up front and uh, the likes of Ronaldo not the uh, Ronaldo's uh, he's in midfield uh, Ryan Paul at right back for them but he, uh, you can clearly tell they're clearly uh, they're absolutely exhausted because they only played a few days ago which favours the bigger clubs like ourselves Vasco da Gama um, and we'll have to go control for a little bit yeah not much happening here uh, this is poor from both teams uh, come on So it's a foul, whatever, for Ryan Paul, no, no uh, card. 
Um, now we're seeing another foul. Victor Gomez uh, cites Vinicius for a foul and it's probably deserved but at the minute we're not doing much at all um, but this is a chance for Guedes Xavier to Leandro out wide beautiful pass to Brezzetto Carlos cuts inside on his right foot but it does uh, creep over the crossbar good opportunity Avander in the centre of the box and he shoots high and wide here we go with Carlos at the far post Centurion had time but his first time shot goes wide of the mark and that was perhaps our golden opportunity Douglas though open up space Magales still on the pitch I have yet to substitute him off and I may have to force him now that he made such a terrible mistake Carlos Vieiro has won Tigres' 8th corner of this match absolutely insane that they've gotten so many corners against us oh dear this is dangerous Alvarado cleared back in the danger zone and Fierro was not far away. Douglas once more off the bench. Can he make the pass? He can't to Para. Centurion. Douglas, would this be an undeserved late winner? Fonseca. Oh my goodness me. Megales. Miles, miles wide. At end of 90 minutes, we are going to extra time. Support by uh, fouling a man. Here's Guedes all on his own on the right. Cleared. And Fierro looks for Barreto. He is stopped immediately. But he has another chance. Saved by Andrini. But Fierro's in. And it's a goal immediately for Tigres. And my tenure in charge of Vasco could end horrifyingly if we don't equalise and equalise quickly. Tigres goal kick. Magalhães collects. He needs help. Douglas over to Guedes. Carlos is offside at the far post. He's usually deadly from those areas. We've only got 50 seconds to avoid the defeat and already it's out of play. I think we have been defeated here and this will go down as a terrible, terrible defeat. We don't even get to play in the final. And Fierro puts the, the uh, wound into the heart. Tigres won. Vasco da Gama nil. And that is the end of the era of Vasco da Gama. It ends terribly, to say the least. We should never be losing these games. And Tigres uh, will get the once in a potential lifetime opportunity to be the world champions. And Mexico have gotten the last laugh against Brazil on the global stage. Not that this tournament is the end of the world, uh, but to not be able to play in the final. I might not get this opportunity until the very end of the series if I go to Europe, but I'm just embarrassed with that performance. And uh, yeah, I think mm, I think yeah, the game is over. I really don't want to discuss it. So I will be uh, giving one last episode to summarise this uh, season. Um, the fact that we've been either first or second in the four major tournaments uh, in this very brief time in Brazil that means a massive amount but the board will be irate that we have lost this uh, match and the Club World Championship they're disappointed not to reach the final I completely agree um, match performance yeah that's humiliation territory so anyway uh, instead of the Club World Championship final we'll uh, summarize the um, players and how uh, we won the Copa Libertadores, we didn't quite win the league and then we might have to find a new job and uh, so on and so forth. But it will be a final hurrah to Vasco da Gama, uh, Rio de Janeiro in the next episode. So a terrible, terrible result and well done to Tigres and uh, we'll see who wins the Club World Championship as well. Bye for now.